see if I can run through this to make sense. So in this case we just it's just a simple drawing just to demonstrate. But anyways we have two batteries. We're going to call this battery one. We're going to call this battery two. Both of these batteries have full charge protection that uh, is in their programming and they are MOSFET based BMS's. We have charged them up above the criteria for full charge protection. In this case we're just going to say that full charge protection kicks in at 14 volts or above. Uh, and also as the current drops below 3.5 amps or below and once those two criteria are met for 10 seconds full charge protection will be set. If full charge protection is set in battery one full charge protection is set the charge MOSFET gets shut off. Alright in battery two it let's just say this lagged a little bit and it was not in full charge protection or if they both reached full charge protection one of these batteries is going to be slightly more voltage, terminal voltage, than the other. In this case, when that happens, let's just say that this one is not in full charge protection, to make it simple, this one is in full charge protection. The terminal voltage will be reduced by 0.3 to 0.6 volts. Some say as much as 0.7. I've mainly observed about 0.4 to 0.5 volts, typically. I don't know if that goes by size or how many MOSFETs are on the on the board or whatever. But let's just say, so the terminal voltage, and I'll demonstrate that, the terminal voltage will be reduced by 0.3 to 0.6 volts. So if the battery's at 14 volts, internally, as read by the app, well, what you would read at the terminal, and you can do this in a, in a per battery case, not in parallel, but just try this experiment with a single battery and overcharge it to full charge protection. And you'll see that the vo voltage is reduced as what's read in the app than what's measured at the terminal. So if that's at 14 volts, now our battery is actually at 13.5. This one, let's just say to make it simple, is actually at 14. And it's not in full charge protection. The charge MOSFET is not off. And so now we have one battery with 14 volts, one battery with terminal voltage of 13.5. Battery two begins to discharge. All right, because that's what's going to happen when you have one power source with a much higher voltage than the other. It's going to it's going to start discharging out of that battery, and that's where you'll start to see your unequal load sharing from a pair of batteries in parallel. All right, so then the next step. Since the charge MOSFET is off on this particular battery, the batteries cannot equalize, even though battery one voltage is 13.5 volts. So even though this battery is at 13.5 volts, and this one's at higher voltage, they can't, they, you can't get the 14 volts to go into the 13.5 volts because the charge MOSFET is off. All right, so now you're already stuck in a conundrum. All right, the voltage begins to fall on this battery from 14 volts as power is fed to the load. So this, this battery starts going from 14 to 13.9 to 13.8, but also this battery, after a charge of 14 volts uh, and the charge is taken off, the, uh, and of course the BMS has its own loads and various other things, the battery one voltage internal uh, to the battery will fall to its natural resting voltage. Natural resting voltage of a 12 volt, you know, 12.8 volt uh, nominal lithium iron phosphate battery is around 13.35, maybe 13.4, 13.45, somewhere around there. So it's going to want to fall to that anyway. So this battery is taking up all the load. Battery one is taking up all the load. But this battery is falling internally without having much of any load on it, essentially, other than the BMS itself, uh, towards the natural resting voltage, which is 13.35. So with battery number one at a resting voltage of 13.35, but the charge MOSFET is still shut off, which is reducing the terminal voltage yet still below the 13.35 due to the charge MOSFET being off, will result in a terminal voltage of 12.8 to 12.9, roughly. Okay, just roughly. So now we have a battery one that has a terminal voltage of 12.8 to 12.9. We have battery two that was falling, it was taking up all the load, is falling from 14 volts down uh, under load. Now, obviously from 14 volts, which is above resting voltage, which is in the upper knee, that voltage from 14 down to its... Uh, into the meat of the flat area of the curve for the state of charge or capacity, actual capacity of the battery, once it hits around 13.35, uh, 
or let's say 13.3 under a little bit of load, it really stabilized. So it stays at 13.3, 13.2, 13.1 for a very long period of time. Okay, so this one's at 13.3, 13.2, discharging over a very long period of time. Let's say you have a 50 amp load or a, let's just say a 20 amp load, not a huge load. So it's just dragging down the voltage slowly over time in that flat area of the uh, curve on state of charge. But this one's sitting there next to it at 12.8 at the terminals. This one cannot discharge into that one because the charge MOSFET is off. They can't see each other electrically. All right, so then at that point, battery one cannot begin to discharge until battery two terminal voltage matches battery one terminal voltage of 12.8 to 12.9. Then battery one will begin to pick up some loads. So when battery two gets down to 12.8, 12.9, then both terminal voltages of these batteries will be roughly the same, and you will see on your app battery one start to begin to pick up some of the load. And this happens at around whatever SOC in your app would be 12.8 or 12.9 which could be 40 percent could be 30 percent could be 20 percent it's very load dependent because if you uh, have all the load on this one and let's say it's a 50 amp load obviously it's going to drag that voltage down a little bit under that larger load uh, and so it would reach that equilibrium between terminal voltage and terminal voltage quicker if the battery 2 is under load. That's why lead time will tell you to put big loads on it and it should equalize quicker. Alright, so now we are starting to get some load sharing because the battery terminal voltage of battery 1 and, term and battery 2 are beginning to equalize. Alright, uh, so now you're picking up the load. So when both batteries begin sharing a load, battery one will eventually clear the full charge protection and, t and turn on the charge MOSFET. So now all, all voltages of all terminals are returned to the actual voltage. So there's no derating of voltage by the 0.3 to 0.6 voltage. Uh, and so all the, all the MOSFETs are on. All the charge MOSFETs, all the discharge MOSFETs are on. Sorry, that's my uh, compressor drain <laughs> I always get that on video so at this point when as soon as that charge MOSFET turns on and the bat the battery voltage of battery one will jump up by that point three to point six so as soon as it jumps up point three to point six volts at the terminals again battery one is now going to have point three to point six volts higher than battery two and battery one will then take the majority of the load but at this point um, since all MOSFETs are on, the batteries will equalize quickly because they can e now equalize to each other because the charge MOSFETs are on, uh, the discharge MOSFETs are on, of course, uh, and they can see each other electrically, and then they will, they will then, uh, even though battery one will begin picking up the load, they will then equalize very quickly after this, and then the load sharing will, they'll, they'll, they'll equalized to each other and eventually the load and then the load sharing finally gets equalized but it's already at a very low SOC this could happen at around you know 10 20 30 percent SOC 40 percent maybe if you've got a big load on it because it will equalize the loads at the terminals uh, quicker since they can't see each other electrically uh, so that's that's the rundown of it of how that works and why you see that one other problem with that is batteries that have FCP don't clear that FCP until a very low voltage also. Um, if they were to clear it at let's say you know let's say if it has FCP a lot of times the internal parameters programmed into the BMS won't clear it until say 13.35. If it just had a regular full charge protection or a high voltage disconnect let's say 14.7 which is pretty standard a lot of times that that charge MOSFET will open up again when the voltage of that particular battery that has gone into over voltage protection will clear at say 14.5 or 14.4 in that case these you would have a little uneven discharge just for a little bit and then they would begin to equalize and I'm sure a lot of people have seen that high voltage disconnect so let's go over and I'll show you that that's in action now this this goes for just about any battery with a MOSFET based uh, BMS. If you just go into your app and just shut off charge MOSFET, you will see a reduction in voltage at the measured at the terminals. 
uh, that's not unusual. The difference between just a regular battery that does not have full charge protection and a smart battery or whatever, whatever you want to call it, that does have full charge protection is how quickly that, that condition clears. On a regular battery like this Epoch Essentials, it just clears right away. So if you were to charge these into overvolt condition and then start discharging them, there might be a split second of unequal discharge and then quickly they will they will come up. So let me demonstrate that on this. Now one other note, this unequal discharge is not the same as when you might have a wiring deficiency in your system and you're always getting one battery that has a slight larger pull or larger draw than the other one due to uh, wiring inefficiencies like uh, bad terminals or bad crimps or something like that. That's not the same as this. This behavior that I just described would, should be easily observable. Uh, but if you have bad crimps or bad wires or bad something like that, that's always going to be there and it's always going to be around the same amount of uh, current difference um, and it would be load dependent also. If you have a deficiency in one of your uh, terminals, the larger the load, the more deficient it would be, but it's generally going to be steady. Alright, let me open up the app and we'll, I'll demonstrate this portion. Alright, so what I've got here is just, uh, we're just using this single 105 amp hour Epoch Essentials. Fantastic quality battery very simple it's an essentials basic but it's all you need and it's a fantastic battery uh, this is the app for it I've just got done charging it uh, we did not go into overvolt or anything like that don't need to but it's now balancing as you can see with the red cells uh, charge MOSFETs on discharge MOSFETs on let's go to the dashboard real quick and you see that's 13.8 volts this is 13.81 as you can see they match there's no load on the battery right now. I have a fan right here that I can turn a load on and I want to demonstrate something else after this. But let's go back to the cells tab where you can see the MOSFET. All right, so we were at 13.81 on the dashboard on this one, it was 13.81. Well, let's shut off the charge MOSFET and watch this voltage, all right? I didn't shut it off. All right, 13.5. We just dropped 0.4. Turn it back on. 13.81 or actually this battery only drops about 0.3 it's very minimal compared to some of the other batteries and again I don't know if that's because of the number of MOSFETs but as you can clearly see when this is off the terminal voltage drops by 0.3 still says 13.8 here we got 13.51 measured at the terminals these are the uh, pickups for the multimeter so 13.8 go back here turn on the MOSFET and 13.81 alright so that is how that is demonstrated now let's demonstrate something else just for the hell of it that confuses many other people and that is you come to your boat you come to your camper and you're reading some weird voltage typically that's because your discharge MOSFET is off look discharge MOSFETs off it says we have 8.93 volts but that is phantom voltage as soon as I turn this fan on, let's see what happens to this voltage. And I'll just turn it on low, so I'm, you'll hear it click. So, fan is on. Oh, there actually is nothing there. It's not turning the fan. It's just bleed through. Let me turn the fan off. It's just bleed through through the MOSFETs. There is nothing there. So when you see an odd voltage of 8 volts, 6 volts, 9 volts, that is not the battery voltage. That is just phantom voltage through the... Uh, through the MOSFETs, through something, and I assume it's MOSFETs, but as soon as you turn on a load, there it goes. Now, let's, uh, there's no voltage, but let's, fan still on, let's turn it on. Fan starts up, voltage starts up, fan's running, everything's in agreement. all right? All right, let's turn off the charge MOSFET. Look at that, you can hear the voltage, the fan voltage drop. So we're at 13.8. 13.08 you can hear that fan pick up and then back to 13.69 so there under slight load it demonstrates it even more we had about a 0.6 voltage drop with the charge MOSFET off and I think that's just a function of all MOSFET based BMS's uh, and then when some of these other companies added full charge protection uh, they really didn't help us out now it might protect the battery on a single battery system uh, especially from poor programming 
you know people that don't know don't know what they're doing or very poor chargers uh, like I said so it's there to protect from camper converters or very bad golf cart chargers or any type of charger or bad programming that might conspire to hold a battery like this at 14.6 volts for days weeks and months uh, which is not a good idea you want to float this battery which is not really a float it's actually a lower absorption uh, you want to float this battery at around 13.4 13.5 just above uh, normal resting voltage just above normal resting voltage so that it retains 100% capacity uh, if you're gonna use it at any time in the near future you know a couple days couple weeks whatever if you're gonna be a few months even turn it down a little bit into a storage voltage 13.2 13.3 just below natural resting voltage alright so let's turn this off you can hear that fan when I turn that off register the actual voltage let's turn it on high all right. Actually, under a certain load, as the load goes up, you cannot turn the MOSFETs off or on. This still might be able to shut it off, yes. But at some point, I think that won't let you allow, uh, allow you to turn it off either if the load gets too high. Right now, we're only pulling three amps. So, some peculiarities, some... Uh, some uh, attributes of MOSFET based BMS's um, and again uh, this for whatever reason has become uh, to the front and center on Will Prowse's page uh, and YouTube videos on the watt cycle but this an anomaly has been known I mean at least to myself and I know Ben Stein discovered it as well probably two years ago and we, you know, we've been working around with customers uh, for customers that have purchased batteries uh, with full charge protection in how to set them up uh, so that you don't reach full charge protection. Really what you need to do is you need to know the criteria at which full charge protection is set. Make sure that your highest absorption voltage of all charge sources never reaches the threshold of full charge protection. Uh, and further, if it's a BMS that can you can get into with uh, the Overkill Solar app, a lot of times you can change that full charge protection, push it out of the way. The problem is most of the BMSs that you can get into with the Overkill Solar app are like JBD, JK BMSs, and various other BMSs. And the ones that have full charge protection are actually an unknown BMS most of the time. So I'm not sure who makes those, uh, but it's if you can before purchasing a battery. If you can find out that it has full charge protect protection, I'd probably avoid it. Stick to something tried and true like the Essential Series or the Epoch V2, which uh, does not have full charge protection. Uh, hopefully will, maybe will start incorporating a test for full charge protection on his future battery test. Because he's, he does, or maybe some of the other guys like uh, Lithium Solar Channel or some of the other guys, hopefully they can incorporate testing for full charge protection because boy when you get a uh, a bunch of them in parallel it really wreaks havoc in addition if you were to happen to get batteries that were set up in series it wreaks even more havoc because it's hard to control unless you have external balancing on which battery reaches what voltage at any given time uh, even if you align them perfectly in the beginning over time they will get off um, in voltage at, at the top of the absorption voltage and one's inevitably going to get out of line and be the highest voltage so it's a real problem when you turn this off um, alright I hope that helps hopefully that's clear as mud I guess if you have any questions you can ask below however this is a pretty complex topic I would ask that you watch and rewatch the video to understand uh, I don't want to rewrite what I just went through. So, if you don't get it, don't worry. <laughs> Most people don't. Alright, have a good one.